Good morning. My name is Greg Davis and I'm with CVS ArcSafe. Our toll free number is 1-877-472-3389 or you can get us also through info at cbsarcsafe.com. Today's presentation is on the remote racking system RRS2. What we found is about 85% of the circuit breakers around the world are things that you have to turn a screw and it either moves a cam lobe or a screw and that gets the breakers on and off the bus. Well, then we have a totally different ball of animals to deal with. This is like the barrels and the monkeys, so to speak. The first circuit breaker that we're going to look at today is the Westinghouse DB50. Westinghouse made the DB series from about the mid-1950s up and through the early 1970s. The breaker comes in a DB15, which is mounted on a DB15 frame a DB15 mounted on a DB25 frame and goes in a DB25 cubicle, a DB25 on a DB25 frame in a DB25 cubicle, the DB50, which is what we're going to start here with, and then we have the DB100, which is a rotary style that we'd use an RRS1 or an RRS3 for. Okay, but fundamentally the ones that are extractors the 15, the 25, and the 50 all use a similar operating mechanism. And what we're going to do, uh, Brian, can you look at the, uh, the video to show where I'm going to be pointing here inside the cubicle? Back here, we've got this actuator, and it's pushing down a rail, a ramp, and that's going to defeat the interlock that is on the left side of the cubicle. And that's what the 15s, the 25s, and the 50s use. So the way that the RS2 is going to do this is instead of taking the yoke that a man would use to rack the breaker, it's going to defeat the latch with our secondary actuator here, and then we're going to use a primary actuator to pull and insert the circuit breaker. That's how this setup has to work. Now, the other thing that you're going to see is the bottom part here is what we call a cubicle or cabinet attachment. When a man sets up in front of a DB cubicle, he's going to put this yoke on there. He's got to reach in there, push down the latch, and yank. And he is the push-pull reference with this yoke to get the breaker in and out of the cubicle. Well, we have to generate a fixed point of reference for the RS2 to perform this operation. And that's why you're going to see as we go through this today with the DB50 and later the MA250 uh, breaker, or MA350, you're going to see us with a cabinet attachment that's going to give us a fixed reference point to be able to pull and push from. So we have our standard pendant here that we can use to do this. This would get me approximately uh, 30 feet or 10 meters away if I really stretch it out. We're going to turn on the power and it comes on and boots up. The way that this system is set up is the bottom two buttons are usually our secondary actuator. And then the top two buttons are going to be the primary actuator for pushing and pulling the breaker. Okay? So the first thing we have to do is defeat the latch. And this lifts up a pin that rides in a guide, and then we pull the breaker out. Then we can release the latch. And the breaker is now in the disconnect position. Okay. To reinstall the breaker, the way that the ramp is set up on the side, if we wanted to, we could actually um, just leave the latch to ride across the ramp. I normally, if somebody says, well, gee whiz, I want to start out with it in the test position, so I can actually nudge it, and we can get it into the test position. Now that's the test position right there. So the first latch that we dropped it in was disconnect, and now we're in test, and now if we want to go the rest of the way in, we can just push, and the breaker's in the connected position. Now what you notice is the system is bound in a slight amount of force right now, and that's because we have to release the tension within the system to be able to disconnect it. So all we do is we'll simply pulse and release that tension. And now we have successfully completed the removal 
and the insertion of the DB50 circuit breaker. The DB25 is just a smaller version. I'm going to open the cubicle while you won't see it. If you haven't seen this type of stuff before, you'll just be able to see that this is just the little brother, so to speak, and you can have this a DB15 and a DB25 uh, on that same size frame. Um, some of the things to also note, we have remote switch actuators for these also. The RSA 80 and the RSA 95 series are made so that you can either operate the fixed handles or you may have handles like this that will move for the smaller one or for the, the or rather for the, this is for the DB50, this is for the DB25 and the 15 also. So don't be afraid to send us your pictures with what you have if you've got questions about this because what's behind the door counts for us to be able to make sure we're getting a proper quote. Also remember, our field representatives do provide free on-site assessments of what you have for switchgear, and we work to do our demonstrations uh, free of charge. They don't carry one of everything that we make because that would take a semi-truck to haul around. We have videos available online that you can view so that if you've got questions, you can look there and we can interact with you through email and phone to answer other questions. Can you talk a little bit about the, the, the wireless video system? Okay. The wireless video system, the reason that we have this here is this. Somebody says, I've been doing this by hand for the last 30 years, Greg. I can't see what's going on. Well, the whole purpose of this is so that instead of you being right in front of the cubicle, you're able to focus it on things like the interlock on the side to monitor the progress of the racking and both in and out. So if you were to ask me on rotary breakers, only about 10 to 15 percent of the time does a customer need a video system. On the RS2 type of breakers, that number is almost 100 percent. So we have a version that's RRS centric that can mount right here on the front and the top of the RRS2, or a lot of times we would recommend to customers the magnetic base mounted camera so that they can monitor that. So this, we can move this, this has got a two foot gooseneck on it that's movable, so we can motion it. We can take a look at the monitor, figure out that we've got it where we want it to see to look inside the cubicle. So it comes off very easily because we're going to have to move this here and go over to the next cubicle. So I can move this from here over to our MA cubicle with very little effort and we can monitor the foot latch over here just by rotating things around now. And what you're going to see is, you know, it may not be upright in the video. This has its own internal camera, which is chargeable, and it's got an LED display on it to let you know that it's got a good charge on it. There we go. It's, it's sagging just a little bit on me right now, but I'll let it finish yeah, sagging. Sag yeah, okay, thanks. Now, we're going to look at the next breaker, which is an MA250. And what I'm going to tell you about it is this, is after we get done with that, we're going to look at a couple of other circuit breakers that are back over behind me right now. And the purpose of that is so that uh, we can discuss various kinds. One other thing I'll note about the DB breakers before I leave here is this, is the way that these are set up is to be a replacement for the factory rails and to also, in the cases of the DB uh, breakers, there's normally an interlock that's underneath the rails that prevents the circuit breaker from moving unless the rails are in place so you don't accidentally have the breaker fall out of the cubicle when you're trying to move it. So you do have to have the rails in place. We actually do make 
a single breaker active device, which we're not going to show you today because it's not part of the presentation, but it's made for just the DB breakers that we've done. Okay. Now, the way that this adjusts, we've got the eco slide rail here on the side. So the first one we're going to move is this. We're going to bring it down and we're going to lower it so we're not moving the machine around with a high mass point. Get this down towards the floor. And then we're going to bring this down. Let me just make it. Yeah, that's it. And now that makes it easier for us to move the machine around. The easiest way that I would say that you do this is I, I think about it like bore sighting a gun uh, where you're going to take and you're going to line stuff up so that you work to get it as perpendicular to the cubicle and to your cabinet attachment as possible when you're getting ready to hook stuff up. Okay, so we'll come down here. We'll raise the actuator up just a little bit. Normally I would actually do this from the other side, but for demonstration purposes today, we're working to do it from the left side instead of the right side. And I've got to take this fitting off here. So we can do this. this is set up is you're going to have the foot latch press and then it's going to release a, a rod that's down here in a foot track okay when that rod comes out of the foot track then we're able to move the breaker okay then there's three positions in the foot track in the MA cubicle one for connect one for test and one for disconnect okay so we have the system hooked up now. The operation will be that we're going to push down our foot latch here. Oh, I forgot. I, mean, I need to connect the actuator. That's my fault. Let's see. There we go. Here we go. So we'll push down the foot latch. And that's defeated the foot latch. And now we can bring the circuit breaker out. Okay, we can release our foot latch. We can now just nudge the breaker in to the disconnect position, and the foot latch will actually drop into place right there. To go from disconnect now to test, we'll defeat our foot latch, nudge it just a little bit. Oh, what? My mistake. And that is now the test position. To go from test to connect, we'll defeat our latch one more time and normally go all the way in, release our foot latch at this point, and the foot latch will stop the progress of the breaker. And the breaker is now in the connected position. Whenever I'm bringing a breaker like this out, I normally do not stop at test or disconnect. I'll simply bring the breaker out and then work to nudge it back into the disconnect position. So uh, whenever you start the operation and you have the breaker moving, 
hold the button down until you're ready to stop the movement of the circuit breaker. Don't be pulsing this type of circuit breaker, just moving it little bits at a time unless you're right at a stop and planning to make a stop at that stop and you're doing that going in. So these are things that you need to be cognizant of and we've sold these devices around the world. They're in use in the Middle East, in Canada, in South America, in Australia, uh, in Malaysia, in numerous other countries where we visited and developed several different types of solutions. So we're going to take a look now at some of the other types of breakers that we can rack with an RS2 even though we're not going to go to the effort of having tooling present today. General Electric makes what we affectionately call the one-arm bandits. So this is a GEAK2 breaker and we have tooling for it and for its larger brother, so to speak, the GEAK2-5075 and 100s and the GEAK1-5075 100s. Those are the one-armed bandits that General Electric made from the mid-1930s up until the uh, early 1970s. And you can look at our product finder online at cbsarcsafe.com. Send us pictures at info at cbsarcsafe.com or call us at 1-877-2479-3389. So that's the General Electric one. We're going to step back over here now and we're going to look at some of the other breakers that we've brought out for the demonstration today just to talk about. This circuit breaker is a Merlin Geron slash Schneider FG series. Normally you see an FG2, FG3, or FG4. There are still some FG1s that are out there also. It's an FF6 circuit breaker that was made from the mid-1980s and they still uh, have parts and everything for these things today and they are used around the world. Um, the way that this circuit breaker racks is this. This trip button has to be depressed and then this arm moves over to the number two position. When that arm moves to the number two position, there is a floor track rod which cams the circuit breaker off the bus and then the circuit breaker has to be moved about six and a half to seven inches and be pulled via the handles or by this to the test slash disconnect position. These are normally uh, things that you find in IEC rated substations. There are a few in the United States that you will find that are used usually in uh, hydro plants up in uh, the New England area. Once you have it to the number two position, you move this again and it goes to the number three. The number three position on this circuit breaker so that the circuit breaker can be removed from the cubicle. But for the purpose of racking the breaker, we normally just worry about going from one to two and pulling or pushing the circuit breaker. When you're pushing the circuit breaker back in on this one, you will push until you encounter some resistance when you get to number two. And then we have a motor that mounts over here and replaces this handle with a rod that goes through this interconnect right here. And then it will pull the breaker onto the bus and complete the racking operation. So Siemens makes the 8BW series, which we've encountered in the Middle East and in Australia. And we've developed a racking system for that also. So it's similar in terms of the floor track operation for the progress of removal and inserting the circuit breaker. The next circuit breaker that we're going to look at is a different animal again. This one, while it has a cam lobe on the side of it, it's the ITE HV and the 7.5 kV and 15 kV breakers rack the same way. And what happens is down on the front of this circuit breaker, I'm going to set this out of the way for a second, you have to defeat a latch that's down here, and I know you can't see it very well, but for those who have these, you'll know what I'm talking about. And then you would insert a bar over here in the racking mechanism. And then you, holding that latch down, you have to now rack that down about 45 degrees, remove the bar, reinsert it, and do it again. Well, we have developed a racking system for this type of breaker. Uh, for a Northeast uh, affiliate of ours, and 
This has been something we made about eight years ago. So if you have an ITE HV 7.5 or 15 kV breaker, we have a solution for you. And it's this little thing coupled up to the RS2 for getting the breakers in and out of the cubicles. The last breaker that we're going to look at this morning is the Westinghouse DA breaker. Now, the reason I'm bringing this breaker out and showing it to you is because this thing comes not in one width, not two widths, but three different widths. Westinghouse made this breaker to go from anywhere from 3,000 up to 10,000 amps in capacity. And you can't tell what you may necessarily have in your hands until you start working with this. So this is the DA100. This is the narrow frame for the DA100, 3,000 amp. We have over on the other side of our warehouse, we're not going to bring it out, a DA100 wider 3,000 amp frame, which is six inches wider. And it's important to note why you have that difference. For us, we have to have tooling that's going to fit on the breaker, and it has to span the frame. So we need to know the measurements of what you have. You don't have to be able to answer all the questions today. We can work to help you answer the questions you have. If you'll send us your pictures at info at cvsarcsafe.com or call us at 1-877-472-3389, we will work to get you on track with a remote racking system for these and others that are out there that you may have. Whether you've got uh, Square D Fluarc breakers or Federal Pacific breakers that may need something like DST2s, just like the Alice Chalmers breakers, you've seen the Alice Chalmers breaker you saw, we have solutions for those. Do we have any uh, questions now? Okay. Once again, uh, we'll wait a couple minutes for questions. You can reach us at info at cbsarcsafe.com or 1-877-472-3389. If there is no questions, I would like to thank everybody for tuning in today. And again, info at cbsarcsafe.com or 1-877-472-3389. We have developed remote racking systems for numerous types of extractor breakers around the world. If you send us your pictures or make a web inquiry, we will work to help you in developing the solution sets you need for your equipment to keep you and your people safe. Thank you.